Coming up on today's episode, the best plasma HD TV over 65 inches, the secret to Netflix HD, Robert's HD home theater PC, it's done, and wow, did you have a lot of ideas for the best wireless controls, why zombies go better with Twinkies, not snowballs, and of course, the Blu-ray releases for the week of February 16th. This is HD Nation. Today's episode is brought to you by Gamefly, Netflix, and GoDaddy.com. Welcome to HD Nation. I'm Robert Heron. I'm Patrick Norton. HD Nation is your guide to the best in HD content and the best in home theater gear, no matter what your budget is. Blu-ray, online, satellite, cable, over the air, on a thumb drive, whatever. If it is in HD, we like it. Yes, my home theater PC is built. Yes, it is done. Ta-da! I'm, I'm walking very cautiously because if I drop this, Mr. Uh, Heron will cry. I will cry. <laughs> Although I can easily repurpose that into a new case, so. <laughs> which I may end up doing just for space concerns. But I will it's say, so though, that last nice. week we were asking about control options for your home theater PC. And I, there must have been 7,000 emails. It was an impressive <laughs> response from the HD Nation. And we'll be getting to that later in the show, of course. Although I must say... I am kind of thinking about adding digital uh, S1 Digital's 100-disc Windows Media Center compatible uh, Blu-ray disc changer to that setup, because then it would be, well, it would automate ripping, no doubt. But it would all, why rip, though, if you can have all 100 discs just attached to Think the box that, itself? A cooler next to your, your Lazy Boy, <sighs> freaking remote control, 100 Blu-ray disc cool. changer? And the kitchen's only like 15 feet away. I think I could, maybe not. Maybe why, not. Why, why walk? <laughs> Fifteen hundred bucks, he can have a hundred Blu-ray discs on tap without getting up from the couch. It's actually all integrated with Windows Media Center. It's that's like, that's the key of yeah. S1's product. So I was like, well, you know, Sony makes that four hundred disc changer, two of them out there now. Wow. So I'm like, four hundred disc Blu-ray changer. Yeah, but you know, it's not Windows Media Center compatible. Blah blah blah. But it only works with like a Sony Blu-ray player. Yeah. yeah. We'll talk about that on another episode. I, I also got to ask, how many two terabyte drives could you buy for fifteen hundred dollars? Hmm. Well. With current pricing via my favorite online retailer, 8.8, <laughs> or almost 9. That's, but uh, that's a lot. That's a lot of storage. Wow, it's 16 terabytes. Mm, that's yummy. What do we put on? Though. What? Uh, well, let's forget about it. <laughs> let's talk some yeah. news. Hey, the post-CES hardware rush is picking up speed. Woohoo! Our very good friends over at Vizio, they are now taking orders for their new lineup of HDTVs, HD TVs, including the 55-inch VF552XVT which packs 802.11 and Wi-Fi so you can run Vizio's internet apps like Vudu, Netflix, Amazon, Rhapsody, eBay, Flickr, Yahoo, and who knows whatever else you're going to get tired of anyway. So <laughs> unbelievable. It's but crazy. Like five HDMI ports, all totally. the integrated applications Bluetooth on there. Bluetooth support for the remote. Ooh. Yes. You can even link your phone into it, I guess, as well. I like that thought. And I guess they're going to start with the 55-inch, but eventually you're going to see the 47- and 42-inch models with similar features. I sense some serious testing in the future. Yeah, that's one definitely. And people are actually, have you seen that screen? Because it looks I was, sharp. Yeah, over the weekend I was in Ooh. Costco. And I will say that a majority of the TVs I saw leaving the store, at least for the couple hours I was in there, were Vizios. And a lot of people were eyeballing the big one. That big LED, true LED box. <laughs> Remember 3D HDTV? I, I, I recall something The big about story this. from CES. Yeah. Panasonic says they're going to be the first to ship 3D plasmas this April. Electronista.com says that the 54-inch Viera VT2 will cost just under <clears throat> $6,000 in, in, in U.S. dollars. Panasonic didn't say if the new panels would make it to the U.S. The smaller panel of the pair is a mere 4800 bucks. Yeah, but that... Uh in Japan. In Japan. Yeah. So I'll be curious to see what happens by the time we get... Why isn't it coming here at the same time? We That's don't what know. I want to know. Well, maybe, maybe. I mean, Panasonic usually rolls stuff out globally, so maybe yeah. it is, and they just haven't told us. Oh, and Sony announced that a firmware upgrade is going to bring some of its existing Blu ray players into the 3D world. No way. They've added 3D capabilities to the BDP S370 and S570, along with a new Blu ray player to the ranks, the BDP S470. It fits right in between the 370 and the 570. The 470, which costs considerably less than the Sony Blu-ray player I own, uh, actually adds Netflix, Amazon Demand, and YouTube playback, along with the 3D in the box, and it should sell for well under 200 bucks on the street. Thanks to PC World for attending the Sony briefing where they announced that. Woohoo! And yeah. much to our dismay, Netflix will not be getting 1080p streaming later this year. 
CNET was reporting <laughs> that Netflix had 1080p rollout on their schedule, but uh, we're thinking Voodoo has some competition, and it turns out that no. Now the editors are <laughs> basically saying in an updated article that 1080p streaming is not coming to Netflix this year. Quote, unquote. The editors know it's perfect, right? Because there's an article, they're like, we met with Netflix. We saw you like, Netflix has plans for 1080p this year. And Netflix is like, no, 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 no. You got that wrong. <laughs> you, you jumped on that story a little early. The no. editor's note is perfect from, this, from the story. And they claim, uh, Netflix now claims that it incorrectly acknowledged 1080p streaming in the company's 2010 development roadmap. A Netflix representative has clarified that the company plans to bring 5.1 surround sound and closed captioning to its streaming HD videos later this year, although not 1080p. So I agree that the watch instantly stuff is, I think it looks good at 720p, yeah. but I really want 5.1 audio. That's going to be one of the big things I'm looking yeah. forward to. I'm actually, along with the 5.1 audio, I'm pretty stoked about closed captioning. Actually, I'm, I'm mostly stoked about closed captioning. Keeps us from waking the sleeping toddler with the loud movies come up. Oh, man. <laughs> Some, somebody needs a pair of wireless headphones. I do. <laughs> this is a good time to bring up that email from Mo, who wrote in, Robert and Patrick, I was using my PS3 Plus Play On to get Hulu and Netflix to my TV. Recently, I started using the Netflix streaming disc for my PS3. The quality of Netflix HD is substantially better. In a quest to get an all-in-one system with a good picture, I started using a PC as a media box. I've got a 12 megabit per second internet connection. For some reason, Hulu looks great. Netflix does not. Now I'm back to using the PS3 for Netflix and Blu-ray and my computer for Hulu, Boxy, and all that stuff. Why does Netflix look so much more compressed to my PC when Hulu looks so good? Why does Netflix on the PS3 look so much better than on the PC? Thanks, guys. Love the show. Mo. Mo, you have a good eye. Netflix does not stream high definition on your PC or any PC that we know of. It could be an old computer, a fast computer, a quad-core, Pentium, whatever. Except for maybe in the Netflix secret testing labs, PCs do not get HD streaming. Not that we've ever seen any such testing lab or been to any such testing lab or even know if such a testing lab exists. No. There, there is a whole list, though, of Netflix-ready devices that you can view on the Netflix website. <laughs> but, however, right now, the only way to watch HD Netflix streaming is via a game console like the PlayStation 3 or the Xbox 360. Select Blu-ray players. Select internet-connected TVs on my beloved TiVo. Or one of the Roku, or on the Roku digital video player that Patrick loves so much. Get a free 30-day risk-free trial of the Roku box at revision3.com/roku. <laughs> Chill, baby. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've got a growing dollar to feed. That I understand. Dear yeah. Netflix, please bring Netflix streaming HD to my PC. I want 720p on something other than my beloved TiVo. Yeah. Yep. Which reminds me, while the 26 million homes. With a Nintendo Wii in the U.S., we'll be getting Netflix streaming later this year. They won't be getting HD streaming either. Well, it's not an HD device, so I kind of, kind of expected this one to happen. Yeah. Lest there be any confusion, though, we just wanted to point that out. <laughs> though it is tempting to fire up the output from the Wii to a video processor like Anchor Bay's DVDO just to see what happens. It does look pretty good, I will admit. It's nice for the gaming. I, you know what? Just, yeah, Wii gaming is fun. I like, I'm into bowling. So, <laughs> he is. that is. In the what we're watching this week department, thanks, dude. <gasps> Zombieland I want that game. rules. <laughs> Just roll the clip. What do you think? Zombie kill of the week? Close, but no cigar. Zombie kill of the week goes to Sister Cynthia Knickerbocker. Alright, we'll be right back to talk Blu-ray releases weekend. Possibly more of why Zombieland should be on your short list. Death! Broken Hearts, your favorite band taking a little time off. There are bigger disappointments than getting home with a new video game and finding out you've wasted 60 bucks on a DVD jam-packed full of gaming suck. I can't help you with death or taxes, and my dating history is a mess. But our sponsor, Gamefly, the largest online video game rental service, they can help you avoid buying a crappy game. We're talking thousands of new and classic titles across all consoles and handhelds at your fingertips for 16 bucks a month. Matter of fact, it's less than 16 bucks. It's really easy. You can rent one to four games at a time. You can keep them for as long as you'd like. 65 hours to finish that game, two hours at a time, no problem. Gamefly has no late fees, no due dates, and shipping is always free. Once you're done playing a game, you send it back. Gamefly sends you the next available game on your list. You can even buy a game if you like it at a discount and keep it forever. Now, I got a deal for you. HD Nation fans, two-week free trial, but only if you sign up at Gamefly.com slash HD Nation. 
Some restrictions apply. See the site for details. But please, keep HC Nation coming by trying out our sponsors like Gamefly.com. Rated R restricted. Horror, violence, gore, and language. Yeah, but no nudity. It's just, what is it about zombies, man? Uh, the What We're Watching This Week department, let me say it again, Zombieland rules. The Blu-ray is pretty slick. It includes a digital copy, DTS HD Master Audio 5.1 on the soundtrack, which means you have the awesome zombie mayhem coming from behind you. This is a gorgeous transfer. You're thinking this is a low-budget flick. You know what? There is awesome detail, both in your face, like blood and glass shards and other things. And deep in the backgrounds, there's just a lot of gorgeous, gorgeous information packed in the frame. The facial expressions are fantastic. Fantastically detailed. The blacks are super black. It is gorgeous. The extras, well, are meh. They are the suck. Though the visual effects their section that takes you from green screens to final looks pretty slick. And then I guess the zombie land is your land. That was kind of enjoyable. The, the main EPK, though, the press kit thing was just a waste. It is definitely not toddler friendly, but Woody Harrelson in a snakeskin jacket carrying a pair of nickel plated 1911s dispatching zombies in an amusement park. Epic. Canada, they've got it right. Brutal violence, gory scenes. I, I got it on. Next week. Okay, fine. It's time for the Blu-ray releases for the week of February 16, 2010. First up, the Dirty Harry collection. That's right, all five Dirty Harry movies in one package, all in glorious high def. It's worth noting that the Dirty Harry Ultimate collection has been available in Blu-ray for a while, but this version is a bit cheaper with fewer extras. You'll still get the commentaries, a special about Dirty Harry, and a retrospective. So if you're just looking to add these classics to your collection, go ahead and make my day. I mean, your day. Next up, The Lady Killers. We briefly mentioned the Coen Brothers version of this film last week, but unfortunately that one's still unavailable on Blu-ray. This week we're talking the original 1955 version with Alec Guinness and Peter Sellers. This version features a 1080p ABC MPEG-4 encode and includes an introduction by Terry Gilliam as well as a documentary on the famous Ealing Studios, where the film is produced. So if you're looking for your classic black comedy fix, don't miss it. Also released this week, Akira Kurosawa's Run. If you're a fan of the cinematic classic, the Blu-ray edition is a must-have for the extras alone. It includes a feature-length making-of documentary, lots of behind-the-scenes footage, several featurettes examining samurai art and culture, as well as pieces looking into the life and career of Kurosawa himself. So if you're into loose retellings of Shakespeare, or you just want to see what the most expensive Japanese film as of 1985 looks like, check it out. Other releases this week include Black Dynamite, Woo! Cabin Fever, Coco Before Chanel, Woo! Contempt, Three-Way Killer, The Criterion Collection's Hunger, Law Abiding Citizens, Lola Montes, Revanche, and Woman in Trouble. Revanche? Revanche? It's gotta be one of those. Coming up next, sounds good to me, dude. Let's talk home theater PC controller. You guys have a lot to say. I also gotta thank one of our sponsors, Netflix. Netflix delivers movies directly to your home, saving you time, money, and hassle. As a Netflix Unlimited member, you get DVDs by mail in about one business day. Plus, you can instantly watch thousands of TV episodes and movies streamed directly to your PC, Mac, or right to your TV via a Netflix-ready device, like the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and soon, the Nintendo Wii console. Just last night, I was testing out the Blu-ray playback on my home theater PC by watching Watchmen, courtesy of my Netflix subscription. Today, I dropped the disc in the mail, and I'm looking forward to seeing the next movie in my Netflix queue, probably the day after tomorrow. And with Netflix, you can watch as many movies as you want. Shipping is always free, and there are never any late fees or past due dates. Keep the movies as long as you like. You can get unlimited movies two ways for only $8.99 a month. As a new member and an HD Nation viewer, you can get a two-week free trial membership. Go to www.netflix.com slash HDNation and sign up now. Be sure to use this URL so that they know we sent you. Last week, as Pat and I were discussing control options for my HTPC build, we asked for your thoughts on good wireless control schemes. Well, after sorting through the deluge of email replies, we found some common ground among the HD Nation audience. Now, I have to say, if you already own an iPod Touch or an iPhone, there are several free or low-cost apps you can use to control your home theater setup. I have to say the most popular among the suggestions offered by the audience was Logitech's Touch Mouse software. <laughs> free and it seems to do the trick just fine. Another option is Air Mouse Pro. It's a $5 app, and it was the second most suggested app, followed by Snatch Remote and Hippo Remote. 
I'd say that it's got a few votes apiece. It seems there's some Do good... those all work with the iPhone or... iPhone or uh, iPod Touch. So you get that screen, you end up with a keyboard if you need a keypad for in text entry, as well as a variety of different control sur surfaces and types for depending on what devices you're using. I didn't realize there's an IR blaster in the iPhone. Uh, some will actually work over your internet connection if oh. both devices are on the same subnet. I cool. believe that's how it all works. Okay. Actually, Vizio demoed a similar control that they're going to offer for their HD TVs coming up as well. So I'm thinking that's how it works. Good to know. Now, Android users don't feel left out. There's a free program called Gmote. It's free, and it looks pretty well supported as well. Now, in the wave it around category, if you have to have <laughs> something to hold in your hand and just wave around the room, Gyration seems to be the most popular company out there for these types of products. Well, they're pretty much the, the originators. Of, Definitely. Of, yeah, you're going to like move the pointer around the screen. Totally. They, they seem to be doing it right. Their Air Mouse products were the clear favorite among the mm -hmm. audience. Uh, the $125 Air Mouse Go Plus with the compact keyboard looked to be the most popular suggestion. Now, a few of the HD Nation fans suggested the use of the Nintendo Wiimote and some custom software as a home theater PC Bluetooth control option, and I thought that was pretty darn cool. Absolutely. I know. Actually, that would be, given like, because you pretty much live in Windows Media Center. I do. You know what I mean? You can yank out the keyboard. For some reason, I forgot the Wiimote's a Bluetooth device. I yeah. always always think that the sensor bar with its infrared deal. It's because it works so effectively. I'm you forget you. it's Bluetooth. I, I'm already... <laughs> uh, Anyway, for a, QWERTY keypad, uh, for a QWERTY keypad, though, with integrated cursor control, two devices proved very popular with the home theater PC audience. One would be Logitech's DeNovo Mini. It's 120 bucks. This thing measures about six inches by three and a half inches, and it's about an inch thick. You'll either love that device or despise it. It is definitely a thumbs-only keyboard. It is definitely tiny and easy to lose in the couch. Beware of that. Stylish looking, Six though. inches sounds a lot bigger than it is. No, it sounds really tiny to me. Yeah. <laughs> for my, for my meaty, <laughs> meaty digits. Anyway, Lenovo also has a product called the Multimedia Remote. That's 60 bucks. Pretty affordable. It's a mini keypad as well with what looks like a pointing stick in it graded onto it. I think it's a brand new product, and I want to get one in just to try it out. I don't know how new it is, but people oh. have been getting really excited about it. It's available in Asia. It is currently not available anywhere in the United States oh. unless you buy it off somebody bringing it in from Asia and selling it on eBay. So. Interesting. Yes. <laughs> we also received several solid suggestions for wireless keyboards, including Logitech's Media Board Pro for the PlayStation 3. Ooh. 75 bucks, full size, what looks to be a full size key keyboard with a touchpad on the right hand side. A company called BTC makes a product called the 9039 ARF3. It's also seen listed as the 9039 URF3. 80 bucks, keyboard with a trackball integrated into it that mm -hmm. seemed to have a lot of fans out there. And a company I believe we mentioned last week was Adesso. They have the WKB 4000 US. It's another key keyboard with a touchpad for about 85 bucks. And another loved, beloved product was IO Gear's GKM. 561R, a multimedia keyboard with a trackball, for a relatively affordable $55 online right now. And there were a couple other notable suggestions for home theater control options. N namely, one Snapstream has a Firefly RF remote that seemed to offer a traditional styling as far as remote controls go, right. but a lot of features. It's a WAN-style remote control. Yeah, including a lot of programmability and direct access to many functions you'll find in a lot of home theater PCs out mm. there. And a great piece of software. You already have a remote, but maybe yeah. there's buttons on it that just aren't doing what you want. AutoHotKey.com is a sweet piece of Windows software for all of your remote key mapping and scripting needs. And another piece of software I discovered over the weekend I'm testing out right now is the PS3 remote application that enables the PS3's Bluetooth Blu-ray remote to function under Windows Media Center. Actually, just to function under Windows properly and let you do what you want with the buttons. And it turns out that that, that Bluetooth remote that Sony sells for about 20 bucks online has pretty much every button you need as far as playback controls and you can pretty much map it to a Windows Media Center pretty simply. And I'm, I'm digging that. The wide range of options. That's what a are, ton. What are you currently using? I needed a full keypad, so mm -hmm. while I was shopping over the weekend, I actually picked up one of these wireless keyboards with a touchpad built into it. Literally, it's got a little USB adapter right on the back. You pop it out, plug it right in. There's no software to mess with. This is just handy, I have to admit. I was going to say uh, the USB adapter. I can plug it in. Oh, <laughs> I was going to say, uh, let me pop that out. The company is called Pyrex. I believe they're a European company. This is really nothing fancy. It's mostly an industrial design, but it is thin and light and it runs on a couple of AA batteries, and it includes some basic multimedia keys at the top, including playback, stop, and whatever. This is just for a quick and dirty while I was waiting for your suggestions to roll in, so I've been having uh, good luck with this, and if it doesn't work out with my home theater PC, I now have a very convenient wireless keyboard to use with other PC builds down the road, so. 
Are you going to show this off next week? I would love to. Okay. I'm really enjoying it. Give me another week to really get the so getting the software just the way you want. I got I think I got my desktop how I like it. <laughs> but just getting everything loaded onto it, depending on what software you want to use to drive your, say, Blu-ray playback, or just loading it up with all the multimedia files that you want to have on there locally, rather than what you stream off your local server if you have one. Those kind of things are where you really tinkering, building it was easy. I'll, I'll put it to you that way. But just building, messing with it and customizing it and getting it the way you like—that's where you spend a lot of time. And control options. And thanks again to everyone, everyone who sent in those uh, uh, a flood of great options and ideas to try out for controlling this beast. It feels so nice. It does. And I gotta say, I'm loving it already. I am finding it finding. And then once you get all of that done, you can then go online and find the content that you want to watch. And it, there, it's growing every day. It's amazing, and I'm really looking from looking forward to more HD sources online as well. So you're ripping and encoding. You've got yeah. your DVD collection. You've got yeah. your Blu-ray connection. You, you put a Blu-ray drive into it. You're watching Hulu on it. You're watching Netflix on it. Yeah. It, well, Netflix, I, I'm not torn so much. It, because if we don't have the HD support on PCs. I'm going back to my PS3 and my TiVo. Please, Netflix. Yeah. Please. South Park Studios. Uh, if you're a South Park fan, just <laughs> that's endless fun. And. Uh, Everything else I can find too. That's the, that's the big thing. Exploring what's out there and just there's, there's no it. voodoo for the PC either. No, mm. my cable provider also provides an integrated app for watching anything you get through your cable system through a web browser or through an application. I'm exploring that to see if it's worth my time. I believe it's all standard def, so I'm, I'm less inclined to do that. So, but anyway. I, for one, can't wait to see the demo next week. Right now, though, i got to thank GoDaddy.com. I've been buying my domains to GoDaddy for years. They're cheap, they're fast, they're easy. And if you didn't know, they've got web hosting with no long-term contract. That means <laughs> you're done with this website. Stop paying. It goes away. And you don't have some nasty thing on your credit record. GoDaddy's hosting plans, they're bigger and better than ever. We're talking 99% uptime, free 24-7 support. Did I mention the no annual commitment? And you pretty much get to choose what you want. You want it Windows, you want it Linux. They got the help for you there. Now, I know you want a discount. If you use the code HDN13 when you check out, you're going to score 20% off any one, two, or three-year hosting plan. So restrictions do apply. You're going to have to see the site for those details. And do me a favor. Check out revision3.com slash GoDaddy. You'll get all the HD Nation GoDaddy deals and codes. Do us a favor here at HD Nation. Get your piece of the internet at GoDaddy.com and use one of those HDN codes when you do. Hey, it's been a while since we did the recession selection, but can we do an excessive selection? I'm, in, I'm up for that. All right. Mark writes in, my wife and I watch a show every week on the TiVo. Thank you, Mark. And this is Mark. A month or two ago, somebody asked you where to find a plasma larger than 65 inches. I don't feel your show really answered the question. Sorry about that. We too would like to buy a plasma in the 70 to 85 inch range. Do they exist? Panasonic sells a 103 inch plasma, so you'd think there should be at least a couple of models between 65 inches and 103 inches. We currently own a 65 inch Panasonic plasma and are only interested in plasmas. Well, OLED would probably do as well, just not LED. Doesn't have to be inexpensive, could. Thanks in advance, Mark. <laughs> what a fun question to answer. <laughs> well, let's get it right out of the bat here. Uh, there is one 85 inch plasma out there actually, and it is from Panasonic. But you have to go to their business side of things, and they offer a business plasma called the TH85 PF12U. Now, this beautiful thing is a full 85 inches. And that, to put it in perspective, that the screen size, the visible screen size is just slightly smaller than a twin size bed. So it's like 80 inches by 47 inches by four inches it's thick. Lot. It's a lot. 85 inches is huge. Now it, <laughs> it is being currently, it's currently listed on Amazon. There's a storefront on Amazon claiming to have three of these in stock. <laughs> they are still there. And let's see, 85 inch panel, 1080p resolution, about 260 pounds. The overall dimensions of the panel would be about 80 inches by 47 by about four inches thick. And it runs on 120 AC, so you don't have to worry about that. However, it does, they're claiming it lists a 1250 watt power demand. That's so, healthy. That's, that's 10 amps. That's pretty good. I'm thinking that's probably maximum. I doubt it runs at full tilt like that all the time. And the, <laughs> nonetheless, you are gonna have like, you're gonna want a dedicated line, like maybe that and one other device if you're nice careful. 20 amp circuit driving that particular plug in the room. That's a 10 amp draw, that's a healthy draw. I just, uh, that's like hair dryer territory. Uh, I'd be careful about, I'd have the power check where you're gonna plug that baby <laughs> in. It also uses uh, Panasonic's relatively new PDP, Neo PDP technology, which basically offers lower, reduced power consumption, blacker blacks, which means your improved contrast, and fast, faster pixel technology for even better detail performance. Inexpensive? Oh no, oh no. <laughs> Say it. The price of the plasma plus shipping. Now, 
$27,164.71 as I looked it up online. That doesn't include sales tax. I, even so, I still want to click the button and say, yeah, yeah I want that. Although my credit card to go, <laughs> go away. It's just a good size. Actually, it's, it's a pretty good car. Uh, shipping charge was about 650 bucks or so. So it's called an even thirty grand with tax. And well, what tax. was the panel? The panel was what two hundred and sixty Six pounds? pounds. The box and everything that it ships in is about six hundred some pounds. So <laughs> that, I just want to see the box it ships in more than anything. And yeah, okay, there is an eighty-five inch panel out there, ten eighty p using brand new technology. But if you're going to go that big, you're looking. You better have thirty grand to blow. All of a sudden. Projectors look so much really more. Really nice projectors. Really nice projector <laughs> with a really nice screen. You know, possibly even a retracting screen is still going to be. You're going to. I should have priced that. Five K. As a 10K? comparison, uh, you, could, you could spend all you want, but you could do a great setup for that price. Yeah. Half price. Half of what that panel would cost you. For a mere fourteen grand. Front projection. <laughs> Front projection, baby. Kurt from Cooperstown has a great question. We've been getting this one a lot. What's the highest resolution that can be pulled off of a 35mm film? I'm wondering if it's worth investing in Blu-ray now or waiting until the next media medium is released. I've already lived through VHS and DVD. I don't want to make a big investment in Blu-ray when 10 years from now there's going to be another form of media with better quality. This also translates to SD media, mainly TV shows from late 80s and 90s, Seinfeld, Friends, stuff like that. Will these shows ever be released in Blu-ray or is DVD the best quality for them? Them. Thanks, Kurt from Cooperstown. We've been getting a bunch of great questions lately about how old movies make it to HD formats, especially when they were originally shot in 4x3 formats, which ties in nicely with your whole Seinfeld friends question because they were shot in 35mm too, which is duh, 4x3. This is part of why we've been talking about aspects ratios, but to need telecine, picture film scanning is where we got to go to really get into how they basically. Totally. We're talking about turning film into digital video, and they do a frame-by-frame -frame scan of the content of the, the actual film. Actually, ideally, right, they, they use the camera original negatives. Those get scanned in a digital format frame-by-frame. -frame. The older the work, though, the less likely anybody has a decent print, much less the original negatives, which exactly. brings up your two favorite qualms about old films. <laughs> Scratches and dust and any other mark that shouldn't be on there or wasn't part of it, let alone just straight degradation of the film content itself. Right. The, the platinum standard for converting a 4x3 film into digital video is the Wizard of Oz restoration right now. 8K scan of the three-part Technicolor negatives. They were individually hand-corrected, reassembled, and basically they did the whole Technicolor color thing because Technicolor actually measures light levels across through three different filters and it gets reassembled. 8K Super is high. insane, right? That's 8,196. 92. 92. Yeah, they basically use horizontal resolution. They measure the, you know, ACTV, we measure the tall part. They measure, measure the horizontal part for digital acquisition. 8K, 8192 pixels. 4K, which is just now starting to get kind of almost common in super high end movie features, like because of the red cinema camera. I think District 9 and one other film last year were shot in 4K. That's 4,096 pixels wide. But you know, I think 8K is probably the the, the practical resolution for, for scanning 35 millimeter film. That, that's the current state of the art for the technology. Mm -hmm. Now, ideally, you want to scan no matter what your no matter what it is that you're going to scan. You want to scan it as many lines as possible to create the most detailed part you can before you go ahead and do things like cleaning and processing of that right. image into a digital video sa sample. So. Yeah, the nice thing about the comedies you're talking about, Seinfeld, Friends, I can almost guarantee they're going to go into Blu-ray because zillions of people watch them in the recent past. That means they, they might actually be interested in buying them again to double dip on the format since they probably all bought the DVD box set. Really nice thing, though, is because they were big budget, high quality shoots using 35 millimeter film that were shot well after people realized they could make a lot of money off of box sets on DVDs, the negatives were probably safely, safely stored and are in really good shape. Totally. Now, the example you gave with the Wizard of Oz, there was a lot of hand work done there, frame by frame analysis. There are now automated tools that can take over many of those same functions, basically looking for things like scratches and dust and digitally eliminate it as it's being scanned into their systems. Now, these newer systems, on top of the 8K resolution, or 8,000 8, line scanning resolution, are what's going to make, hopefully, some, some more of the older content bring it over to Blu-ray mm -hmm. and give it to us so we can still enjoy it and enjoy it in the future at, at arguably the best quality ever. Now, well, I, I don't want to say anybody should ever have to watch The Phantom Menace again. It made a mockery of, of Star Wars in my childhood. But that's a case where they took a, 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 Cine Alta, a Sony Cine Alta camera that shot 1080i, and George Lucas dared people to figure out which scenes were shot in 35mm, which were shot in 1080i. The four camera shoots that are out there look amazing. 
man, I just like, you know, it's, it's, if I just want to see more films scanned. I want to see more films restored before they're scanned. I mean, case in point, 20th anniversary Goodfellas, they use the old HD DVD transfer, which looks spectacular, but if they'd done a restoration of, of the negatives and rescanned it in with current technology, chances are the colors and the balance and some of the white bloom could have been eliminated. It's just, oh, and Blu-ray, too, you just have a larger medium to play with, so you can use things like a higher bit rate and right. devote more bits per pixel to make it look even prettier. So the short answer is 8K, yes. Do you want to? You you don't want to ever buy another copy of these again. Well, you probably won't need to. And if you're happy with the DVDs, stick with them. But yeah, I think they're gonna come out in Blu-ray. And uh, you think 4K is gonna replace 1080p? Eventually, yeah. Uh, I think they're ten begin- years, no, twenty years. No, say like probably we'll see demos of the TVs in five years. You'll see something else in between those two resolutions, though, probably as early as next year. Oh no, 1440. No, no, no. Keep no, that no, number no, in no. your head. No. And I'm hoping the Blu-ray format. I believe the Blu-ray format actually supports a higher resolution now. Or it always has. So there is some, some headroom in there to go there. But also keep in mind that, as with DVD, Blu-ray quality, the encoder quality on the back end when they're producing these videos, it gets better over time. And the pictures, the resulting video that we look at, will continue to get better over time as well. Much as with DVD in the early days, the, the original movies that we saw on those discs were pretty good. A, a tremendous jump from VHS. But as time went on, DVD video became better and better. MPEG encoding became better. And as a result, we ended up with better and better and looking videos as the technology went along. Wow, it's, that's one of the reasons it's still around today. I don't want to buy a 4K TV not yet. 4K projector. Oh, Front man. projector. Mm. Hey, Av- available now. I'm cutting them off. <laughs> I'm not going 4K. The best video game show on the internet has gone live. It's now every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. What are we talking about? Revision3.com slash co-op. You're going to see co-op live with video game discussions and reviews with live guests in studio. We're talking about co-op taken to the next level. And don't worry, if you missed a live broadcast, you can still download or watch the episode from revision3.com slash co-op or wherever you normally watch co-op. Do me a favor, check it out. Co-op live Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern, revision3.com slash co-op. Hey, we hope you guys enjoyed this episode of HD Nation. As always, we want to know what you think, so send your comments, questions, or suggestions to hdnation at revision3.com. And you'll find all of the links to subscribe to the show, so if you're not getting the latest episode of HD Nation delivered to your podcatcher, what are you waiting for? That's right. Subscribe, watch, and until next time... Hey, thanks for watching. I'm Robert Heron. And I'm Patrick Norton. We'll see you next week. Okay.